Hi guys, so for today we're going to talk about the par parallel circuits and uh, for this video we're going to, to know the basic uh, relationships of current, voltage, how to get the total resistance of uh, purely par parallel connected resistors and of course how to get the uh, voltage drop, the current and power in each resistors connected in parallel and of course the total current and power uh, in a pure parallel resistor circuit. So, what is a parallel circuit? A parallel circuit is a type of connection in which the current has two or more paths. Okay, in uh, in uh, in uh, contrast with series, okay, series circuits is a type of connection that has only uh, one path for the current. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, if we're going to demonstrate it, the current flows from the positive side. Okay, and it would go here in a node, where in a node is a is a part of the circuit that uh, interconnects uh, uh, two or more or three or more uh, uh, electrical elements such as this. It connects R1, R2, and R3. They are all connected here. So if uh, if a current passes through a node, it would be split, okay? Wherein we call this, let's say, I1, and we have another one here. We call it I2. It's like a uh, tube, okay? The node is like a tube wherein okay, the current flows here and some of the current would actually go here and go here. So that's why we have I1 and I2. So as you can see, the current has only one, uh, it has two or more paths to flow, okay? So, and again, if it enters here, it is furthermore divided again into this and into this another current so they in, in in short in a parallel circuit type of connection par pure parallel uh, the currents are not the same except if the resistances of the resistors are again the same okay let me make that clear in a series circuit okay the the the, the current is simply uh, equal to the total current okay but in this case for a parallel we have a different current for each resistors if they don't have the same resistance. So, if we are to get the total current, okay, we, we need to add the current through R sub 1, the current through R sub 2, and the current through R sub 3, and so on and so forth. If we have another parallel resistor here, I sub, I sub Rn, and that is the total current. Okay, so in terms of voltages, okay, voltage drop across each resistors the wonderful characteristic of a parallel type of connection is that if they are purely parallel resistors are in parallel the voltage drop across each resistors connected purely in parallel are all equal to v sub s or the voltage source so in short they have the total voltage is equal to the supply voltage and all the all of the voltage drop is equal to the supply voltage Okay, so they don't they have the same voltage drops in a purely parallel series store circuits. So how do we get the total resistances of uh, total resistance of a uh, parallel connection resistors? So we simply use this formula. Okay, this is quantity R sub 1, the reciprocal of the resistance of 1 raised to negative 1 plus R sub 2 raised to negative 1, plus R sub 3 raised to negative 1, and so on and so forth. If we have many uh, connected uh, parallel resistors here, raised to negative 1, and altogether their sum should be raised to negative 1. This is very similar to what we are trying, uh, we see in our books that we have 1 over R sub 1, plus 1 over R sub 2, plus 1 over R sub 3, etc., plus 1 over R sub n, okay, raised to negative 1. This is very similar to this in 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 that I've already simplified the one over one R sub one because it would be spacious in the calculator to type. So instead of one over, I uh, we actually uh, negate this the exponent of this by putting this on the numerator but negating its exponent. It's still the same. Okay. So if we uh, additional information, if we want to decrease the total resistance of a circuit, connect them in parallel. Why? Because if resistors are connected in parallel okay the total resistance of the circuit would decrease because the total resistance that we are going to get is much 
is, is less than the lowest of the individual resistor. So, for example, I have resistors connected in in parallel. So, I have 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 3 ohms. So, if I, if I get the total resistance of that, that should be less than 1 ohm. Okay? So, lower than the least of the resistor. Okay? Resistance. Okay? So, to get the total power still the same, we, we, we have to get the PR sub 1, PR sub 2, and then add it all to get the total power. Or, again, uh, for P sub T, we can use ITVT, I squared T over, uh, I squared T times RT, the total resistance, is, uh, and we can also use the V squared T, v, T, v sub T squared, I mean, total voltage squared over uh, total resistance. So, the same, the same applies. So, we have I squared R, we have V squared over R. From our previous video, we, we tackled it. So, make sure to, to please first watch the first part of this video all about series circuit before you proceed with this. So, if you are already done with that, so good for you. So, let's try to solve some problems. So, these are the um, relationships in a parallel circuit that we need to at least, okay, uh, put in mind. So, let's try to solve. For this problem, we have find the total current, power, and resistance of the given series. Uh, I mean, this should be parallel. Let me just replace this. So, this should be parallel, parallel circuit. Okay. So, parallel, calculate also the voltage drop in each resistor, the current through each resistor, and the power dissipated by each resistor. So, as you can see on our previous video, we have a series circuit, okay, where in the the uh, R sub 1, R sub 2, R sub 3 are the same in given, but now we're going to configure this circuit or solve the current, voltage, power, okay, uh, with the same rating of resistors, okay, resistances. So, first, find the total current. How do you find the total current? Okay, let me just change my color. How to find the total current? The total current is simply, again, by Ohm's law, that's the supply voltage over the total resistance, okay? We have the voltage supply. I forgot again to write. So, we have a voltage supply of 5 volts again. Okay? So, Vs is equal to 5 volts. That's your total voltage supply. And uh, in order to get the total current, okay, we have to get the RT. And the total resistance is actually what? Again, that is R sub 1 raised to negative 1 plus R sub 2 raised to negative 1 plus R sub 3 raised to negative 1. And their sum is raised to negative 1. So, in order to get that, so we have 10 ohms raised to negative 1 plus 20 ohms raised to negative 1 plus 30 ohms raised to negative 1 and they are all together raised to negative 1. And what should we expect in our total resistance? So, the total resistance should be less than 10. That's right. Okay. Less than the lowest of all the resistances, which is 10. So, our answer is 5.45. 5.4, let's say 4545. 4545 ohms. That's the total resistance. We already get the total resistance. So, we are now able to get the total current by having this formula. We have V sub S is 5 volts. That's the supply voltage over 5.4545 ohms. So, 5 divided by 5.4545, so that is 0 0.91667, so 0 0.91667 amperes, or in engineering notation, that is 916.67 milliamperes, okay? So that is the total current that we got, okay, total current, total resistance, okay? So, how about the total power? The total power, we can get the total power by multiplying the total current and the total voltage, which is the voltage supply itself. So, we have 916.67 milliamperes. That's times 10 raised to negative 3. If you, if you uh, enter it in your calculator, it should be 916.67 times 10 raised to negative 3 because of this milli. Not just simply 916.67. Okay? So, we have V sub S, that is 5 volts. So, if we multiply this two, that should be 916.67 milliamperes multiplied by 5. That should be 4.583. Okay? 
3 watts. So that's the total power. Okay, how about if we are going to compute 4D, it says calculate also the voltage drop in each resistor. By concept, okay, since they are all connected in parallel. What do we say if they are all connected in parallel? They have the same voltage drop. Okay, VR1, VR2, VR3. Is, and that voltage drop is simply equal to the supply voltage. So what can we conclude? That the VR1, the voltage across R sub 1, the flow voltage across R sub 2 is equal to voltage across R sub 3 and that is equal to V sub S and that is equivalent to 5 volts. Okay. That's the answer for the calculate also for the voltage drop in each resistor. It's simply 5 volts because they are all connected in parallel. One great example of that is the extension cord, okay? So, uh, if you plug it in in our uh, outlet, 220 volts, so they are connected in parallel. Each socket is connected in parallel so that uh, whenever uh, you try to use it, okay, it has the same voltage drop, 220 volts. You are not choosing wh whether, where are you going to, to plug in your appliance because you know that when uh, if you have an extension, Wherever you plug in your appliance, that is still the same voltage that you will get. Yep, that's at 120 volts, at least for the Philippines. Okay, so we have 5 volts here. And, of course, cal the current through each resistor. How do we get the current through each resistor? Now, we will be using the for ohm for Ohm's law formula. Is equals I is equal to V over R. So, to get the current through R1, and that is... Voltage across R1 over the value of the resistor R1. So the voltage is, since they have the same, that's 5 volts, over R1, that's 10 ohms. So we know that the current is 5 over 10, that's 0 0.5 amperes. Okay? So 0 0.5 amperes because 5 over 10 is 1 half. Okay, the current through R2 sub is, by Ohm's law again, that's VR2 over R sub 2, that is 5 volts over 20 ohms. So we expect that this has a lower current because it has greater uh, resistance. So 0 0.25 amperes. And lastly, for the current through IR3, that is VR3 over the resistor or the resistance of 3. So VR3, we have 5 volts over R sub 3 is 30 ohms. Okay, so IR3 would be 5 volts over 30, that is 0 0.167. 0 0.166, let's say, 7 amperes. And if you're going to add all of the current, okay, this current, IR1, IR2, and IR3, it should be approximately equal to 916.67 milliamperes. Okay? approximately equal so last but not the least how about the power dissipated by each resistor again we can calculate power in terms of three formulas so the power in each resistors are not the same because their resistances are not equal okay so we have pr1 how about uh, we we use the i squared formula i squared i squared r formula so uh, we have I R1, okay, squared multiplied by R1. The current through R1 is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 amperes squared multiplied by R1 itself. The resistance of 1 is actually 10 ohms. So if we get that, we have 0 0.5 squared times 10. That is 2.5 watts, okay. So, for PR2, the power dissipated at resistor 2, same formula, we have IR2 squared. You can also use the other formulas if you know the voltage and, of course, the current. So, we have R2, so we have 0 0.25 amperes. This is that, IR2, we have computed a while ago. Squared multiplied by 20 ohms. So, obviously, this has... Uh, simple uh, they call this simple substitution simple computation 1.25 watts this is 2.5 watts and of course last but not the least the power dissipated by resistor 3 that is ir3 squared okay 
times the resistance of 3. This is torque 3. So we have uh, 0.1677 amperes squared multiplied by 30 ohms. So if we have that 0.1667 squared multiplied by 30 ohms, that is 0.834 watts. So again, if you're going to add these three power dissipations, you get an approximate answer of 4.583 okay, watts. Okay, so again, I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. This is again Engineer Abbott. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Okay, so see you again on the next video.